Getting ready to fire up a new engine? Make sure to perform these critical steps first. But before you do anything, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We're excited to bring you new tech videos, project builds, car features, interviews, and much more. Now about that new engine. Whether you built it from the ground up in your home garage, pulled it from a junkyard and rebuilt it, or bought a turnkey crate engine from one of our key manufacturers, they all need to go through a proper break-in procedure. The right steps during this procedure can save your engine, your bank account, and ultimately your sanity. Start by inspecting your engine. That means you should ensure that all accessories, such as headers, alternator, and power steering pump are tight before you start the engine. And check for any water or oil leaks. Even if your engine came as a complete turnkey assembly, it's best to check all major components, such as the distributor, spark plugs, ignition wires, and carburetor. These items could have been damaged or disturbed during shipping. Proper lubrication is key during break-in. When installing an oil filter, fill it about halfway with oil, move the rubber gasket that surrounds the filter with oil, and then tighten by hand. Consider using a premium brand oil and filter. A cheap filter will not be cheap if it costs you an engine. Use a 5W30 or 10W30 motor oil with an engine brake and additive, ZDDP or zinc camshaft additive, especially with flat tabs at camshafts. Speaking of lubrication, you'll want to avoid a dry startup. That means priming the pump. It's best to prime the oil system with an engine priming tool or a pre-luber, even if the engine has already been dyno tested. One last word on lubrication. If you plan on running synthetic oil, you should break a new engine in with a conventional mineral type engine oil for the first 4,000 plus miles. If you fail to follow this procedure, the piston rings may never seat. On freshly built engines, you'll need to change your oil and filter much more frequently. After using a break in oil, you should change your oil at 50 miles, 500 miles, and 1,500 miles. Again, at 4,000 miles or so, it's fine to switch to a synthetic oil. Timing is another key consideration during initial startup. Set the ignition timing after starting the engine. The starting point for most carbureted engines is 34 degrees before top dead center with vacuum advance disconnected at 3000 RPM. Some experimentation with timing is required for optimum results with locally available fuel, but it should be between 32 and 38 degrees before top dead center. If your engine uses a hydraulic flat tap at camshaft, Keep the engine between 2,000 and 2,500 RPM with no load on the engine for the first 30 minutes. This is critical to break in the camshaft, although roller cams really do not need to follow this step. You'll also need to keep an eye on your cooling system during the break-in process. Most often, the cooling system on a fresh engine swap will have a lot of trapped air, which will lead to wild temperature gauge readings and possible water pump cavitation. To help alleviate trapped air in the cooling system, fill it with a 50-50 mix of quality coolant and water a few hours before you plan on starting the engine. Leave the radiator cap off during this time. This tends to help purge a fair amount of trapped air before you start the engine. You can also use a lever vent type radiator cap on your radiator so you can manually purge trapped air while the engine is running. Your normal cap can then be reinstalled after the engine cools off. Many engine manufacturers also recommend varying the loads on the engine for the first 200 miles. In other words, drive the vehicle with varying speeds and loads on the engine. Occasional full throttle runs from a rolling start to 4,500 RPM will help seat components such as piston rings, but the engine should be cooled after doing this. It's also wise to check rocker and valve clearance after 150 to 200 miles to ensure adjusters are tight and lashes proper. Those are our tips for engine break-in. What do we miss? What does work for you? Leave a note in the comments section below and thanks for watching.